Good evening, I'm Sarah Sapsanama. Let's begin with the headlines of the hour. CIAA in the final phase of its probe into the Teramok scandal. Authority chief says corruption deals take place abroad. Nepal police prepared to file a case of violation of peace against those who were arrested in the federal parliament premise, allowed to keep them in custody for seven days. The Kremlin warns conflict between Russia and the US-led NATO military alliance would be inevitable if European members of NATO send troops to fight in Ukraine. Nepal's women's national team set to play Lebanon in the semi-final round of the WAF Women Championship. Match to kick off at 10.45 tonight. The Commission for the Investigation of Abuse of Authority, CIA, has said it has reached the final phase of investigation on irregularities reported in the procurement of Terra Mox. The Chief Commissioner of the CIA, Prem Kumar Rai, has said that the probe will conclude soon. During the meeting of the Public Accounts Committee under the House of Representatives, Chief Commissioner Rai revealed that there was a growing link of corruption being conducted from outside the country. The authority has already collected statements from former ministers for communication Mohan Bahadur Basnit and Ganendra Bahadur Karki, who have been alleged of involvement in the case. Likewise, the Corruption Watchdog has also taken statement of Chief Secretary Baikunta Adyal. Commissioner Rai added that investigation on the leaked audio recording involving a commission of 700 million rupees while procuring security printing press for the government is underway. Rai also said that investigations are underway regarding four cases related to Forest, Jamelia Hydropower Project, Tara Village Development Committee, Land Scam, and irregularities in the procurement of aircraft by Nepal Airlines. He said that investigations were, however, being hindered due to lack of required laws. CIA Chief Rai said 20,000 complaints have been filed at the authority so far. The Nepal police is preparing to file a case of violating public peace against 49 victims of loan sharks who breached and staged protests at the premises of the federal parliament in the capital yesterday. The district security committee meeting held today made the decision. The district administration office Kathmandu has also given the police permission to keep in custody for seven days those arrested from the protest site. The protesters have been kept in custody at various police offices in the capital. This includes one male and 48 female who barged into the federal parliament premise demanding for justice. In the wake of yesterday's incident, using footpaths in various areas within the capital have been prohibited for security reasons. Public were compelled to use the road for passing as footpaths near the office of the President, Vice President, Singh Adarwar and the Federal Parliament were barred. The Security Committee has also decided to implement a new criteria and use new technology to enter into Singh Adarwar. The Nepal Rashtra Bank, the central bank of the country, has tightened its screws on microfinances in the wake of the protests by victims of microfinances. The central bank has said it will re-enlist loans to provide relief to the victims, implement a maximum 1.5% service fees and allow any victim who have been taken more than 15% charges overall to file their complaints at the central bank. However, these measures are still is unlikely to solve the victim's problems. Currently, there are 57 microfinances in operation at the moment in the country with branches in over 5,000 places and 6 million members. Around 587,000 individuals have taken around 300 billion rupees in loans from these institutions. Victims of the microfinances representing 500,000 victims overall in the country came to the capital in search of justice. Many have demanded the scrapping of cooperative system. Prime Minister Pushma Kamal Dahal directed several units to ensure the pending payments to farmers are released. However, it is unlikely that the farmers will receive their due payments anytime soon. As the Dairy Development Corporation has been saying, it is not in a position to pay back the farmers. Pressure mounted in the government and DDC to release payments as dairy farmers pour their milk on streets as a symbolic protest. 
On Monday, the Prime Minister called on the Chief Secretary along with the Minister for Livestock Development and Minister for Finance, directing them to release the pending payment of farmers. However, the corporation has clarified that it cannot do so immediately. The corporation owes some 860 million rupees to the farmers. In response to the directive, the corporation has instead urged the government to facilitate in its loan process, saying that it can solve the problem if a loan of 300 million rupees was provided at the earliest. Meanwhile, the Umbrella Organization of Private Dairy Industries has also said farmers' money can be paid if there was an increased demand in the market. They have suggested opening up to international market to sell the dairy products that have been accumulating in storage. The Dairy Development Corporation has still been reporting of loss. The Minister of Agriculture has called private industries for a meeting on Wednesday. Based on the National Dairy Development Board, around 700 million litres of milk is produced in the country every day. However, only 1.2 million litres make it to the official market. Dairy farmers of Sapporo district have begun a struggle of their own, saying they have yet to be paid for their produce. They have put forth an 11-point demand as they have yet to be paid almost 80 million rupees. They say they have not been paid since eight months by the Dairy Development Corporation Biratnagar and a few private dairy companies. They have submitted a letter to the Chief District Officer and have demanded for the resignation of Ministry of Agriculture along with halting the import of milk from India. It is now time for our segment Public Pulse where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse. But before today's question, let's take a look at the results from yesterday's poll. Yesterday we asked you what do you term the poor security mechanism at sensitive locations like the parliament. 53% voted for option A, lapses in security, 31% for B, lack of risk assessment and 16% for C, lack of coordination. And here's today's question. What's your take on the Prime Minister's directive to the Dairy Development Corporation? Your options are A, arbitrary directive, B, seeking popularity, and C, consoling the farmers. Voting is on, type NEWS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. Welcome back. The meeting between victims of loan sharks and the government has ended inconclusive once again. Representatives of the victims after the meeting at the Ministry of Home Affairs said the government had not made efforts to address their problems. They have insisted they will not return until the demands are met. The victims' protest is meanwhile ongoing. Families of Nepalese men that are recruited by the Russian army have met with Minister for Foreign Affairs N.P. Saud and urged him for efforts to repatriate them. Minister Saud during the meeting assured the families that it was the government's responsibility to bring them home regardless of the channel they took to enter into the Russian army. The minister also clarified that the government was putting all efforts for their repatriation. Minister Saud has informed families of a total of 200 informed that, in fact, families of a total of 244 had submitted their applications for repatriation of their family members. Locals of Karnali province have remained deprived of health services due to geographical constraints and lack of skilled health professionals. Meanwhile, the province Public Service Commission, which is responsible for appointing doctors and health professionals, has remained indifferent towards the issue. People in the province have been compelled to suffer, especially during emergency situations. Two epidemics and disasters have been reported in Karnali province within the past four years. The province reeled under the coronavirus pandemic for two years, while a devastating earthquake struck Jazarkot on 3rd of November last year. People in the province suffered during the COVID pandemic due to lack of oxygen plant and health professionals, while doctors from different parts of the country had reached the rural region for the treatment of those who had been injured in the earthquake. People were sent to Bhedi Hospital in Lumini province as Karnali provincial hospital in Surkhed was not equipped to handle a large number of injured patients. The province government that has been unable to appoint permanent doctors despite vacancies has also not allocated sufficient budget for purchase of medicines and health equipment. Meanwhile, health professionals who have been providing health services amid absence of required infrastructures in the remote districts of Mugu, Humla and Dolpa among others in Karnali have complained that the provincial and the federal government have remained indifferent towards their plight. The district hospitals have failed to provide specialized health services 
while the condition of health posts operated by the ward levels is miserable. The government has allocated 904 quarters for various hospitals and health institutions in the province. However, only 36% of the workforce have been working as permanent staff. Majority of the health professionals who had been working at health institutions in the province based on contract for a long time have started leaving the province in search of better opportunities. And in this context, in our public voice segment, today we've asked people in several provinces regarding problems that they have faced while accessing health services at their local health institutions. Let's take a look at what they had to say. Doctor, like any BG, 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 whatever. Or maybe a Sarosulabe the Hirasai, the Doctor Lab technician or dinner, technician Savane, Osdi or dinner. The government has taken action against officials and police personnel involved in the Balkumari incident after the probe commission submitted its report. However, dilly dallying has been seen in taking action against the minister guilty of poorly handling the situation that led to the death of two youths. Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal seems to be trying to buy more time in taking action against Minister Prakash Jwala, who has been deemed guilty of letting the situation out of control. Voices have been raised at the parliament for action against the minister. However, the premier has suggested for another study into the report submitted by the probe commission. He also has yet to release the report to the public. During a meeting of the Council of Ministers, the Prime Minister handed over the responsibility to study the report to Minister for Law Dhanaraj Gurung and Minister for Energy Shakti Bahadur Basnit. The Premier has given the two ministers till 3rd of March to complete the task. Now on to international update, the Kremlin has warned that conflict between Russia and the US-led NATO military alliance would be inevitable if European members of NATO send troops to fight in Ukraine. The war in Ukraine has triggered the worst crisis in Russia's relations with the West since the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis and President Vladimir Putin has previously warned of dangers of a direct confrontation between NATO and Russia. French President Emmanuel Macron opened the door on Monday to European nations sending troops to Ukraine, although he cautioned that there was no consensus at this stage. Asked by reporters about the risks of NATO members sent their troops to fight in Ukraine, Peskov said that the West should ask themselves if such a scenario was in the interests of their countries and their people. We've got more news coming up, but right now it's time for yet another short break. Sports News. Nepal women's national team are playing against Lebanon in the semi-final round of the WAF Women Championship. The match at the Prince Abdullah Al Faisal Stadium kicked off just a while ago. The Nepali Eves had progressed to the semi final as winners of Group B without losing a single match, while Lebanon finished as runners up of Group A. Team Nepal are participating at the tournament, being organized by the West Asian Football Federation for the first time and had reached the Middle East with the objective of winning the tournament. The Nepali Eves are aiming to secure a win over Lebanon and book their spot in the tournament final. Nepal had humbled Palestine 4 0, thrashed Iraq 5 0, and secured a 4 1 win over Syria in the group stage. Meanwhile, Lebanon had suffered a defeat against Jordan in their last group stage match, but had seen off host Saudi Arabia and Guam before that. Having scored 13 goals in three group stage matches, Nepal has conceded just one goal so far.
Nepal has lost to Namibia by 20 runs in the first match under the Nepal Tri-Nations Tri T20I series. In the match played at TU Cricket Ground in Kirtipur, Namibia had given Nepal a target of 207 runs. Nepal went all out for 186. Jan Nicole Lofty Eaton scored a century in Namibia's win. Namibia opener Michael Van Lingen went out scoring 20 runs. JP Kodze returned to the pavilion with 11. Jan Freilink managed to score just 5 runs as Namibia collected 62 in 10.4 overs, losing 3 wickets. However, Jan Nicole and Malan Kruger partnered for 117 runs. Abhinash Bohara broke the partnership in the last over. However, Jan had managed to score 101 runs in 36 balls to give Namibia a respectable total. Jan scored 11 fours and 8 sixes and also broke Kushal Malla's record of fastest century made in Hangzhou Asian Games. Malla had scored a century in 34 balls. Nepal captain Rohit Paul claimed two wickets. Karan Kesi took one wicket. Chasing a victory target of 207 runs, Nepal went all out in 18.5 overs. Opener Kushal Bhurtal was out for a royal duck. Asif Sikh scored six runs. Dipinder Singh Aidi was the highest run scorer for Nepal with 48 runs. Rohit Paul scored 42. Kushal Malla added 32. Sompal Kami 26 and Gulchan Jha 12. None of the other batters managed to score in double digit. Ruben Trumpelman was the pick of the Namibia bowlers, grabbing four wickets. Bernard Scores, Jan Freilink and Jan Nicole Lofty Eaton each claimed two wickets. Nepal will next play against the Netherlands tomorrow. That is all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Good night.